Hello! In this video, we will secure a Java EE REST API using Keycloak. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to get notified on new video uploads. This is a companion video of my previous tutorial available at my blog on how to secure an Angular app with Keycloak. Needless to say, we first need to go through that tutorial before this one. Things to remember. Make sure that the environment is correctly set, take note of the base URL, and API URL values. Remember that I'm running Keycloak on another machine, thus I'm using a network IP and port 8080, which is the default. You can run Keycloak on the same machine by updating the standalone configuration. And, uh... Changing the port offset value at the end of the file. This one. Message me if you need help on this one. API call is in the home component. So here's the link that calls this method. And this method calls are REST API service. So this service returns an array of string that we can display in our HTML page as it is done here. This block of code displays, use the ng4 to display the list of anime, animes, anime names if the animes variable is not null or not empty. Next is the HTTP interceptor, which is located in a secured -http.interceptor.ps. Again, this class intercepts all the HTTP request and sets the authorization header with the value bearer and the token of the authenticated or log in user. And uh, finally, the Keycloak server must be running. To run that, we need to execute this command. Again, so I'm on my Keycloak installation is on another machine. So we are running Keycloak on Docker, and this is the command to run it Docker run for 8080. We're setting the default user and password to admin. Take note that every time we run this uh, Docker run, all our previous realm or configuration is deleted or uh, they are deleted because it's not kept in the image. So if, if you want to persist your realm, then you must use, uh, because this one is using an H2 database. So if you want to persist, use another database like, for example, PostgreSQL. So our server is running and uh, the network IP is dot six for 8080. We're logging in using admin admin. At this point, we don't have the realm configuration for our project. So again, that realm configuration is available in the Angular project under the config folder. So let's import the realm by adding, by clicking the add realm button and uh, selecting the realm configuration, which is this one. Click open and hit create. It should create our realm. Our realm should have two clients, the front end, which is a confidential access type. So this handles the security of our Angular app, meaning it requires the user to log in. If the user is not logged in, Keycloak will redirect 
the application to the login page. So we will have a look on that later. The other one is the API client. This one is of access type bearer only, meaning it doesn't require the user to log in. This is most commonly used on API or services type of application. It validates a request by validating the bearer token of the requesting client. And then we need to import our user because at this point, we don't have any user yet. To save you from creating user, so I have here a configuration that will create two users with different group and roles. Import. So Edward is more of the administrator type and Carrie is the normal user type. So later on, we will see that Carrie will not be able to hold the API because that user don't have enough role to access the API in our REST project. If you watch that video from my other tutorial, at the end, I left an exercise where, where the Angular app will call a secure dress API. The code in the Angular project is already configured. Bearer token is correctly set as we see in this code. So all we need to do is configure the REST project and run it. But before we can run the app, we first need to configure the Wildfly server where we will deploy the API project. I'm using version 15. Right now, the most recent version is 17, but uh, I have 15 in my local installation. So I'm using that for this demo. Once we downloaded and extracted the Wildfly folder in our local computer, we need to proceed and download the Keycloak's client from their website that, that match our uh, Keycloak installation. In our case, I'm using Keycloak 6.0.1. Yes, it's a uh, 6.0.1. So we will download 6.0.1. So this is the latest as of this recording, August 2019. And uh, we need to download this C file. I already downloaded it locally and extracted it. So it contains three folders, which are bin docs and modules. All we need to do is copy these folders and paste it in the Wildfly folder. I have, I've already done that, so the files are already in the Wildfly folder. For example, this bin has adapter install offline, which is the file we need to install the client in our Wildfly server. So looking at the bin folder, we have it. Adapter install offline. And to install that, we need to go to this Wildfly bin folder and execute this command. jboss-cli.bat parameter is file with the value adapter install offline. Execute that command. So it takes a while. Oh, sorry about that. I think my key close running. No, you must execute it. You must execute this command while Wildfly is not running. Right, it's taking some time. I don't know why. Okay. Press any key to continue, and now let's look at the configuration file. What happens is that it installed a keycloak subsystem in our standalone.xml. And uh, with that, our Wildfly server is configured 
and secured with Keycloak. Now let's check the API project. Here is our API project. There should be a Keycloak.json configuration that we can download from Keycloak server in the project's source main web app web dash inf folder again make sure because this is the common one of the most common mistake that new developers encounter is by putting the wrong client name ib and port as well as the configuration in the environment in the angular app so make sure that you have the correct ip and port so where did we get this configuration in the in the first video that we have for the front end so click clients and front end installation and let's select the kiklo json this one is the configuration we're using for the client because it's a confidential type and uh, we save it in the assets folder Keycloak, front-end client, the secret is, uh, I don't think we can see that. Oh, yeah, 36. So, And that is another common mistake that developers does or encountered is having the wrong secret key. So make sure that it match. RAM, IP, resource, client, I think all of them are correct. And then the, for the API project, it's the same, but its type is bearer. So that's why it has a slightly different configuration. It doesn't have a secret key. So here is the keycloak.json configuration file, which we got from our keycloak server. Again, this is important. Make sure that you have that configured. And again, the API doesn't have uh access restriction or yeah access constraints here like this one like this is for course configuration the web origins and the valid redirect uris because if you set, you can set here your ip for example this one is coming from localhost of, or if this has a particular ip i mean your angular app if its ip is that too so you you can use you can set that value here so that the request is restricted to that ip so this is for security purposes now going back to our rest application so we're building the rest project now first we have to have this class but if you're curious where we got those uh, dependencies so we're just using the cdi and uh, the rest me i normally use the rest ec jax rs dependency provided by wildfly so these are all my configurations and this will be available in the github project so we have this jax rs activator where we define the package location of the REST API, which is this one. So we have them in comrootcamp.api package, plus we have a course configuration here. So allowed origins is set to asterisk because this is for demo purposes only. And then we have this anime RS. So I love anime, that's why I'm always, most of the time I'm using anime for my demo, for demo purposes. So this is an interface annotated with a path that tells us this is a REST endpoint. In here, we have a get method that returns a response, which is actually a list of string. So this anime RS imp, imp that's hard to pronounce, is the implementation of the anime rs interface so it's a request scope and it returns like i said earlier a list of string 
So let's deploy this by right clicking on the Wildfly server, add remove, so it's already added. And by the way, this server tab here is from JBoss Tools. In case you haven't have a Wildfly 15 new server, and you don't have the, this Wildfly 15 here from JBoss community, you first need, take note that you first need to install the JBoss tools. So if you have a problem installing that, don't just don't hesitate to ask in this video. So we already have our REST API project. And now we're running the server. So it's running. It's already deployed and it's available in Kicklock Oat dash API. If we access the base URL, we will have this unauthorized error. And remember that our API is available in the URL REST animes. So what if we access that REST animes? Again, this is unauthorized. And uh, how did we do that? How did we secure this animes URL? The security is defined in the web.xml file. In here, we can define the URL. So in this case, we have the asterisk. So meaning all the URLs in this project is secured and is only accessible by users who have the role API access. And uh, this is secured using the Keycloak authentication. API access. Again, let's look at the role. Where did that API access came from? So it's here in our key cloak realm configuration. We have an API access role. And again, looking at the users, if we look at carry, carry is not a member of the role API access. And Edward is a member. So meaning Edward should have an access to this API. To begin testing, let us now run the Angular application by executing the ng-serve command. Once the Angular app is running, we can now test the URL. So since we are not logged in, we cannot access this URL. So let's access the Angular application. First, let's try carry. Again, carry is a user who is not, who does not have a role API access. So this call API should not work. That's why we have this error, unknown error, because the request was rejected, should be unauthorized. So let's log out and uh, try with the user Edward. Let's call this API. So what will happen is that the request should succeed and we should, and the request should yield a list of string and we should be able to display the list of strings here as anime titles. So let's click call API. And uh, that's it. Our request is successful. And that's the end of this video. So if you enjoyed this video and uh, if you learned something, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to get more notifications on similar videos. Thank you and bye.